Hello everybody, it's Glass Half Dead here, and today we finally have the end, finished, final results from Nova. This, unlike yesterday's semi-finals results, is going to be a quick video. 10 minutes, 1 second, that's the Glass Half Dead guarantee of lack of quality. What I'm going to be doing here is going over the actual results, just so anybody that wants a really quick know of what's happening. Yes, I can't English. I've got to do that for you right here, and then I have managed to get hold of a few of the different uh, actual rosters from um, the Elysidian Star Striders, uh, the top three players, uh, the, the top four players actually, uh, and I'm just going to have a look at those rosters, say what I think. Let's get into it! Okay, so as you can see, right behind me here, Tau came first, Tyranids came second, Orcs came third. Also, nice, pretty cool thing. All of the top three players there are people we've had on the channel, we've had for interviews. Really cool. You know, that I... The, the pedigree of the interviewees I get is top tier. Uh, so we we have all of their rosters, that's cool. We'll look over them in a sec. We then have Heretic Astartes at fourth uh, from a, a Mr. Blood there. As I mentioned last time, very apt name for the uh, Heretic Astartes. Awesome. Uh, then we have George Rollins in fifth. We have demons. We then have, unfortunately, two people we don't really know um, in sixth and seventh with um, Drukari, then Tyranids, and then uh, eighth was Necrons. Now, the reason I call out the top eight specifically is because those people are the well, the championship bracket for anyone unaware. Uh, the way Nova handled this, it, this is they were all after the day one. Uh, I believe they had pods. And then the winner of each pod went into um, the the different pods of the next day. It was a weird one. Anyway, basically, I'm super washed out. This light is way too bright. I am just really white as well, though. Hold on. Anyway, uh, so I wonder if I'm going to cut that from the edit. I'm probably not. I'm lazy. So the top eight there, even though... Uh, Mary with the Necrons there came in last in her bracket. She was still a winner from a previous day to make it into the championship bracket, is what that means. However, you then have to look at all the others. So we then get number nine, who was Sheldon, who is Kill Team Stream. Uh, again, we had him on last week. He was doing a great job. Um, has come ninth. But that means he's actually come first in his pod. Subsequently, Jordan with Orcs, and then Janice with Azurani came second and third in their pods. And if you keep going, you could figure that out again. So, 17th, John Sargent there, with Tyranid, came first in his pod. Jason Sanders, JJ Max from Discord and Reddit. Um, no, Jason Pease. Sorry, there, there are three, there are two Jasons in a row there. Uh, Tyranids, and then Tyranids again. So actually, in the third pod, the first four were Tyranids. That must have been a fun pod to play in. Uh, <laughs> awkward. Then we keep going down, and uh, where is it? Well, <laughs> we can see the absolute bottom of the bottom Adepts of Starties players. Good thing that Death Denied nerf happened, isn't it, guys? Awkward. Anyway, uh, we also have a random orc list to look at. There you go. Do I have any thoughts on that? I'm surprised there's only one Tau player. That's my main thought. Um, otherwise, I would have been really curious to see where they ended up kind of on the list. If we'd have had lots of Tau up in the championship bracket or if they would have been evenly spaced. That would have been cool to see. Everybody feels that Tyranids are kind of a really real top tier army and I do agree that they are but actually okay there are none in the bottom really they've all done pretty well they've all you know that's actually a really good sign that Tyranids are a strong army strong faction because they are middle table up as opposed to a weak faction would be middle table down so yeah uh, what else is interesting Orcs, so, yes, how did Nova... So this is quite telling. So the final, the actual final was Eric, who is number one, against Alex with his Orcs at number three there. 
Um, and they played three games, well, best of three, on a uh, open on an open board. Yeah. So the question from yesterday had been, are they going to play open arena open or are they going to play arena open arena? Turns out, and I don't know if this was already pre-planned, I, I, I don't know. But as far as I have been told, Nova decided to swap the format at the last second. And instead of alternating, as I believe the players had been told was going to happen, they instead decided to just do, you know, they randomly picked one, whatever it was, whether it was open or arena. And they said, OK, you are playing, you're playing three games of that. Go. So... That obviously heavily affects the outcome of the tournament. Uh, you know, as as it would in any tournament. Who, you know, the factions that are going to be winners in arena tournaments are going to be completely different from the factions that are going to be winners, well, not just factions, but lists as well, that are going to win open tournaments. Cool. Um, it does sound like, so I know that the final against, between Eric and Alex there was played where you deploy uh, on the short board edge, so you've got the long board edge to cover, and it was a shooting Tau against melee orcs, and unsurprisingly, Tau won. It would have been really cool to see how that would have played out. I mean, you know, I'm just saying that that matchup heavily favours Tau, obviously. Obviously. Uh, I don't think saying that is in any way controversial, so that's just a factor. And then I don't really know anything about the rest of the games, unfortunately. Let's take a look at rosters. What have we got? Okay, this is the roster from Chuck. Let's see if we can go through this in order. We have the tower one. Hold on. Here we go. So this is Eric's roster. Uh, he is the tower player that came number one. Does this roster tell us anything interesting? Let's take a look at the leaders. So... He's taken one of each type of leader, basically, um, a regular fire warrior, a pathfinder, and then a crute. For anybody unaware, uh, typically you will take the crute uh, carnivore as a leader in case you want to, because I think he's uh, the cheapest possible leader. So it's just if you need to shave that one point off, you take him. There you go. That's, that's the accepted way of using a crute carnivore in Tau at 100 points, I believe. Uh, is there anything weird on here? So he actually does have a, t uh, a, a DS8 turret on there, which I am surprised by. Uh, I think those are really good fun in casual games, but I haven't really seen them being used in competitive. I will also say, very quickly, these are rosters. I don't know what list people played. This is just a roster. It's possible he put that turret on there mind game style he had an extra spot he was like well okay why not you know let's get it up there uh possibly same for some of the other picks he had okay we then have a pathfinder as comms one as veteran i'm not sure why he would have had a regular pathfinder as comms i guess that would have been point savings he must have had a list in his mind already where he couldn't quite get a comms onto something else so he said gotta save that those, you know, those three, five points for the rail rifle, whatever it is. I'll have it on this guy so that I can buff another rail rifle. But he does then have the classic trio of Pathfinder rail rifles there. Sniper comms demo. That is absolutely standard. Oh, and recon drone. That is kind of the standard. If you're looking to build a town list, by the way, uh, that is how you begin your list. Three rail rifles with sniper comms demo and a recon drone. That... Every list starts there if you're wanting to be competitive. Um, personally, I suck at Tau, so don't listen to me. But I don't think you need three in every single list. But it's it's a strong start, and you can't go wrong with it. Uh, then he has a bunch of different drones. That makes perfect sense. Doesn't really need to be explained. Cool. Um, and that's that's Eric for us. And that that is Tau. There you go. Let's go back to, who are we looking for? Orcs. No, Tyranids were next. Okay, so this is a very interesting Tyranid list, actually. So he's Kraken, first off. Of course he's Kraken. 
<laughs> I don't need to explain that. It's 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 broken. It's a great it's a great sub faction. Of course you're going to be cracking. Um, he then has two warriors. One's his leader. He's gone with Gunner as the leader um, with the Venom Cannon. That is pretty standard. However, in a two warrior list, um, I'm kind of surprised he didn't go with his second warrior as being comms. But he didn't. He went with combat, which is pretty interesting. But I suppose in this list, he wanted a bit, a bit of killy. So fair enough. Now, he then has two Ravenous, one being a veteran. This is interesting. Um, I don't think I've really... So, I haven't played against Ravenous myself yet. I know their stats. I know they're, they're, they look good on paper. But I really haven't seen anyone actually take them. Now, again, I don't know if he did. I, don't, I should probably ask him. But where this gets interesting is the Termagants. Now, in general, people... The, the the discussions I've seen have always been, take Hormigants, you are not there to kill things. You know, your little four-point models aren't there to kill things. That's not the point of them. They are there to sit on objectives and to tie up the enemy. You don't care about killing, it's not really the point. But, so first off, he's got three, three Termigants with Devourers. Now, the Devourers are actually pretty killy. So I totally get taking Devourers. Um, I, you know, again, I've heard a lot of people say there's no point. Just don't bother. But, he then takes enough termagants with flesh borers that he could very well have been using them to be his swarm and his horde instead of hormigants, which is really interesting. Um, I'd love to get him back on and ask why he took this list and how he actually ran it, why he decided to go with devourers or flesh borers or hormigants instead of the termagants. So, yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Oh, and also note, no gene stealers at all. A common thing to run is, you know, one veteran gene stealer. Um, but he, he's he gone with a veteran Ravener or Hormigant in, instead, which is pretty cool. I suspect the veteran Hormigant at the bottom there, just to guess, would have been for in Arena. He would have used him to do the advance move, get straight up to the enemy's um, door, block it, uh, either by physically, you know, um, forcing the enemy to have to roll a 5+, plus and then failing the 5+, plus to open the door, or just being a base to block, which is obviously great. Like, for 4 points, you, you almost have a guaranteed the enemy is screwed turn 1 in Arena, which is why I, I hate Arena and doors. Anyway, moving on. Uh, so, that's an, a really interesting Tyranid list, and I'm hoping to get Chuck back on, we can discuss exactly what it did with that list. Next up we've got Alex. Oh, uh, just just to clarify, I want to get Eric on. I want to get all of these people on to chat. But the Tau list made sense. I, I got what was happening there. This is different to what I've heard being played before. Okay, now we've got Orcs. Now this was our third place. This was uh, Alex, who is Kill Team Academy. We've had him on twice before. So, what do we see? Well, we see um, exactly what we expect. Uh, so, very interesting here. Elite came out, and Alex said, I don't need any of that. He is running. Okay, so he has ammo runs on the list. I believe he didn't use them. I don't really see why you would use them. In this list, I guess, do I? Oh, so if you're ever going to take a Gretchen and it's not going to be your leader, you should take ammo runs instead, to be clear. However, ammo runs, for those that don't know, um, allow you to re-roll uh, one missed dice on your hit roll uh, in the shooting phase. He doesn't really have any shooting, except for the combi weapon with Scorcher. Well, I guess that's shooting. Combi weapon, you know, so, okay, I guess. Uh, yeah, fine. But apart from that, what I was originally saying is there's no flash gets, there's no mega knobs, there's not even any regular uh, elite knobs. The only knob he's got in here is the boss knob, which is the one that you get in the core book from the boys sub faction, so it only has the six up save. And that's it. Apart from that, that is that is an ex the exact list. 
that you could have run with core. He didn't he didn't take any commandos, which actually I'm surprised about. I've got to be honest. No commandos. Uh yeah. Interesting. So he's obviously gone with uh Evil Sons. For those that don't know, that gives you a plus one to your move and a plus one to your advance and a plus one to your charge. Uh so there's also a tactic called war, which allows you to Oh, is it I want to say I probably should have checked this before I started this video, shouldn't I? Uh, it, it, ma it makes you fast. I think it means you can move and advance twice. Or you can... You can advance twice in a turn, or... Well, this is awkward, isn't it? Anyway, it basically means that turn one, you can potentially have orcs moving it, like, up... I think the minimum they could move is seven inches, which is, you know, the movement of an Eldar in an orc. Or you get all the way up to, I think, 14 inches turn one which is obviously huge so yeah there you go um evil sons makes you go fast obviously yeah cool um on the one hand this is really cool on the other hand it makes me a bit sad because it kind of means apart from sub factions orcs didn't get anything in elites weirdly they just you don't need them you just need the sub faction but let's keep going heretic Astartes. This was uh, the fourth place winner. Will Blood here. Um, let's take a read of this. I haven't looked at this at all. So, he's gone with Renegade Chapter. I don't. So for that, that is reroll charges. For anybody, oh, good thing I knew that. Jeez, that was lucky. Uh, he own no. He's got two leaders. So aspiring champion as a leader or cultist champion. Oh, again, I do not know what he ever took. I believe, oh, well, I know that in one of his games, because uh, somebody in the Discord sent a picture, uh, he took two Corn Berserkers. Al although it could have been a champion and a, and a regular Berserker, as he's got them both on his list. I don't know. Uh, yeah, there you go. Um, what has he got? So, let's take a look. Let's take a look. So, as his leader, he's gone Bolt Gun. Okay, he hasn't given him a power sword, so he's obviously not using the aspiring champion there as something as for a close combat model, which is something a lot of people do do. Do do, God damn. Um, which fair enough, fair enough, I suppose. Uh, I I think that's the right choice. I suspect he's only got this guy in the list to use against people that have very obvious deep striking models. Uh, as obviously this is guy is going to be a lot more survivable than the cultist champion. I suspect he would have used the cultist champion as his leader in any arena matches where you can't deep strike. Um, or if there's any, you know, if he knows the enemy faction he's going against and knows the other guy isn't going to deep strike. I guess. I guess. Uh, his sniper, he's got a, it must be a plasma gun. Yep, it's a plasma gun. That's obvious. You don't need to explain that. Heavy, heavy bolter. Makes sense. Zealot, the Berserker Champion. Yep, he's gone Chase Sword and Lightning Claw. Uh, which which is fair. Which is fair. Personally, I'm a fan of the double Lightning Claws. Um, especially if you've gone Zealot. Mathematically, it works out better uh, than just uh, Lightning Claw and Chain Sword. But it's all good. It's all good. Um, Corn Berserker Veteran. Chain Sword. Okay. Chainsaw Bolt Pistol, interesting. Presumably he went Chainsaw Bolt Pistol there because he expected that you make the veteran move and then he might not quite be in range to charge so he'd get a Bolt Pistol shot then charge the next turn. Whereas we see his next Corn Berserker, he went Chainsaw Chain Axe. Because, yeah. The Chain Axe is pretty nice, I like it. I like it. Uh, Chaos Terminator he's got on the list. Pair of Lightning Claws, Mark of Corn, okay. Uh, veteran. Makes sense. Um, again, s same thing. Uh, you, you've got a Chaos Terminator. You veteran move that bad boy for one CP. The enemy has to deal with it. Turn one. Otherwise, something go has gone horribly wrong. Again, I do not know if he ever used it. But for 28 points? Honestly, I think that the Chaos Terminator is, one of, is, is the most... Um, valid terminator because it's in a uh, in a faction <clears throat> where you can spam four point models you know your cultists so you can still hold objectives 
you can you can put a very scary model on the board as long as he's not against plasma spam uh and you know that's something the enemy has to respect so good choice good choice even if it was purely to psych the enemy out and make him think oh no i've got to take plasma spam in case he takes the terminator and then he dupes him and just takes cultists that'd be like yeah cool uh what have we got next uh so the cultist champion i've already spoken on him Brutal assault weapon makes a lot of sense. Yep. Uh, two gunners with flamers. Yep. I'm surprised he doesn't have a stubber. Um, I do like the stubber. I believe over in the Discord he said that actually he would have liked a stubber, but he didn't have the models. Um, for those of you unaware, the flamer there going in at eight points. The stubber obviously is a heavy and then would need preferably to be a heavy specialist, but. Uh, only costs six points because the stubber the stubber is free, I think. Either way, it costs six points. Really good um, for what it can do. Uh, and then a bunch of cultists with auto guns. Interesting that he went auto guns instead of brutal assault weapons, but he did. Cool, cool. And that's it. That is the heretic starties list. Ah, oh, this has not been ten minutes. I apologise. Uh, we've been over this one. Okay, so this is. Yep, yeah, ignore that. Uh, so this is the final roster that we have this is the other orc player who i believe came second in the second pod um i would have liked to have talked about more rosters by the way but these are just the ones that people posted to my discord uh these are these haven't been collected somewhere for me to give to you uh they were just randomly posted throughout my discord and i i saved them to my computer and i'm talking about them right the reason I'm talking about this one is partly because he posted it, that helps, but also because he obviously has done something very, very different to what Alex did, and that's an interesting thing of itself. So whereas I had said in the first one, looking at Alex's list, uh, roster, oh no, Orcs didn't get anything, they just got a sub-faction, and then he's literally just run them as if they were from the core book, there, right? Uh, the, Jordan here, with orcs has done it completely differently first he's got freebooters for those of you that do not know freebooters every time a model in your kill team um takes another model out of action for the rest of that phase and do note it is only the phase uh every other model gets plus one to their hit roll cool easy so that means um obviously a lot of people assume that freebooters because it comes as a mandatory thing on flash kits that it's only shooting nope it can happen in the fight phase as well. It's less relevant in the fight phase, of course, for orcs, because you're already hitting on threes. So it's kind of like, meh, well, you know, do you really need it? So, flash kits. That's his first thing. Heavy, snaz gun, git finder squig. Cool. Uh, yeah, not taking the git finder squig would be crazy. We look down, he's also got an ammo runs on there. Correct, good stuff. He's got a looter spanner for a comms with a big shooter. Um, okay. Yeah, I mean, that's the cheapest way to get a comms into the list. That's that's all I can say on that. Um, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. So that's kind of his little engine there. You've got the flash kit that is going to be git finder squig for plus one to hit, comms for plus one to hit, and ammo run for re-rolling failed. One failed roll in, an, in a turn. So yeah, that could be pretty devastating. The snaz gun in and of itself is pretty good. Uh, it's strength 6, AP minus 2, damage 2. So it's, it's a nice weapon. But he's putting a lot of points into that. So, you know, that little engine there is costing him 40 points. Just to, to run that in the shooting phase. Let's see what else he's got. He's got a burner. Yep. Yeah. But then below that, we've got what we actually expect. A burner zealot. Again, classic take from the core book there. Uh, Mega Knob with a vet. Double kill source. 44 points. Oh, that's rough. That is rough. Uh, again, though, he's doing a similar thing to what we saw um, the Heretic Starship player there do. Where he's putting a veteran move onto a big scary model that you have to deal with. So, that seems to be a classic move that people are doing. Good stuff. Um, he's got some commandos on there, got some orc boys, with shooters, I notice. Um, yep. Yeah. Is there anything else? So, he's got two knobs on there. 
Oh, okay. So these knobs are the knobs from the elites because we see one of them's taking a power stabber. Um, whereas the others, he's kept base with slugger, big chopper. Then he does have a boss knob boy with the combi scorcher, big chopper. Yep, the classic take. Oh, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Hold up now. He doesn't have any regular boys with just um, slugger choppers. Okay, seems like his only boys have shooters. Now, that might sound a bit crazy. However, a shooter, for those of you unaware, are Assault 3 with Strength 4, no AP, damage 1. If he's getting off that flash git uh, engine, suddenly, instead of hitting on 6s, typically, you, you kind of start bringing your BS down. And if you can start hitting on 2s regularly with your, with your, in your shooting phase with Orcs, you're going to murder stuff. It's really strong. So I do get the point of doing that. Um, I'm surprised he went for it. But yeah, cool. He does, of course, have three commandos there. The three commandos, I'm going to just straight up assume, are if he decided he wanted to deep strike. I don't think, just from the, the, the layout of the list, the roster there, I don't think he would have taken the commandos as just guys to run across the board. He has run... A shooting orc list as he did manage to come second in the second pod which makes him 10th overall um very interesting very interesting actually uh, so i have run shooting orcs before um i haven't managed to run it successfully at 100 points i ran it very very successfully at 200 points with the commander but at 100 points i've sucked at it um and to be fair i had a completely different list this i guess makes a lot more sense so that's cool. And that's it, everybody. Um, we don't have any more rosters to go over. Okay, coming back to you quickly because I completely forgot. We also have the Elucidian Star Striders list from Patty there. Uh, so, this is... Uh, so I can't really speak much to this list. I'm just showing you what it is. Because I don't know the rules of them very well. What I do know is that they are incredibly unflexible. And I believe if you take everything, that is 100 points. So I don't think there's much to do here. Yeah. I believe the only choice you get is um, of the Voidsman Gunner and the Voidsman and Axemillion. Who is allowed to be what specialism? I think that's all you're allowed to choose. So, for example, with Axemillion, who is the dog, by the way, we see he's got him down, Scout, Veteran, and then a bunch of other times. I assume this was done to fill out the roster. Because, in theory, you would only ever need um, three variations of him, a Scout, a Veteran, and then a Nothing. These other four are, are useless. Um, here, we see he's got a... Uh, a veteran and a demo voidsman and then three regular and then for the gunner he's got an, a nothing a veteran a demo and a heavy makes sense then we get the named people so on this you cannot change the specialism they have to be what they are um, and it doesn't count towards your total number of specialisms uh, however do note that if they are a combat for example then even if another member of your team can be also be a combat, they cannot be a combat. Because although this Nosso Prond here doesn't count towards the number of your specialists, they do count towards the specialism taken. So you could never have in this list another combat or another comms or another medic. Cool. And well, that's it, really. Yeah, cool. So anyway, uh, that is the Elysian Star Riders. Tau. Tyranids, Orcs. Exciting. Adeptus Astartes right at the bottom. Um, kind of sad. Kind of sad to see the Glory Boys so far down. Also, Astra Militaro only, only going in there with two guys. Haven't done well. Haven't done well. Um, where are the Adeptus Mechanicus? Let's find them. Ooh, okay. 
again, pretty low down there, pretty low down, only managing to get a single win, um, not that I'm trying to call him out there, not at all, um, just obviously, they are potentially a very strong army, I'd actually be really interested to see what his list, what his roster is, you know, I want to see what the losing rosters are, I want to see what the losing rosters are. I will say, I know one of the Adeptus Astartes was a Raven Guard. So just throwing that out there, I do believe what Michael said in the interview last week is correct, and that a lot of these Adeptus Astartes players, they don't really care if they win. They they want to play Space Marines in, in a game they enjoy. So, you know, I wouldn't look at these and say, oh, Adeptus Astartes are terrible. Firstly... Obviously, there was the Death Denied nerf, and there's only three of them in a pool of 31, so, you know, that doesn't speak too much to it. The fact that one of them was Raven Guard player obviously means that they are playing what they enjoy, and they're not specifically playing, you know, to be the best, which is, which is fine. And you know what, I'm sure a lot of these people are the same, you know, just because it's a tournament... For those of you that haven't been to a tournament before, just because this is a tournament that has ended up on a website doesn't mean that everybody here was playing cutthroat, I must win kind of kill team, okay? This was probably a very, very relaxed, yeah. I, I don't know if you've been to a tournament before, but it's not always crazy. It might be up at the top tables, but I've got to say the tournaments I've played at has generally been really relaxed. That could be because I suck and I'm always at the bottom tables. I don't know. I mean, you know, confirmation bias there. I don't know. But yeah, cool. Also, just a quick shout out to George Rollins there. My man, Warp Charge Gaming with Demons. I don't actually know what his list was. He did post it in Discord, but I couldn't find it. Very frustrating for me there. Um, I'm sure he's going to give us a big rundown of his his games, his lists. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what what he says about them. Because even though he came fifth, I believe there was a little bit of... Um, he ended up with a bye in the final round for some reason. I'm not entirely sure. He will have to explain that. I'm not quite sure how or why that happened. A uh, bit of a shame, but it meant that he was effectively blocked from fighting his way into third. So he came fifth, I think. I think. So... He, even though he's fifth, he could have been third. He could have beaten out Alex with the Orcs there, possibly. But there you go. Cool. And anyway, that is uh, the Nova rosters, Nova placements all done. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I'm hoping to get a few of these people on, have a chat with them. Um, hopefully I can actually also find out some people that lost... And maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll do some sort of a workshop. <laughs> some sort of a workshop episode. Instead of taking the best player and saying, how did you win? Teach me, please, senpai. Um, I'll take a loser and say, why did you lose? Let's figure out why. And almost have it as as, as a teaching interview. But then I don't like doing that because... I don't consider myself to know anything um, or be a good player. So me telling somebody else how to win is very, very hypocritical. Uh, so anyway, this has been Glass Half Dead. I hope you've enjoyed Nova. Um, there's going to be more content spewing forth from it uh, in various different ways, both in interviews and in hopefully some bat frips over uh, on Warp Charge Gaming there. Um, I think there's also been a few other get top, ta top table games were recorded. Either way, there's going to be some content at some point from it. But this will be Glass Half Dead. I hope you've enjoyed. Um, I hope you've had a good day. And I hope you continue to have a good day. Goodbye.